Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video we're going to learn about Euler's method for finding the approximate solutions to differential equations. We'll start by looking at a specific example. Here I'm given a differential equation, dy dx equals 2x minus y. Subject to some initial condition, y of 0 equals 1, I'm told to use Euler's method with four steps to approximate y of 2. So this is my statement, and now I want to take this paragraph and pull out the values that I'm going to need to, to do this calculation. I know that my initial x value is 0. I know my initial y value is 1. I get those from my initial conditions. I also have some sort of target um, x value in mind, some sort of x final. So if I'm starting at x equals 0 and then I'm trying to approximate my solution at x equals 2, that's my final x value. I'm also told how many steps I'm going to take, which is 4. And with that information, I'm able to figure out my step size, my change in x for each step. Sometimes we call this h in our algorithms. So how do I find my step size? If I want to go from x equals 0 to x equals 2, I need to take four steps. We might be able to guess that that step size should be 1 half. The calculation would be my final x value minus my initial x value divided by the number of steps, which in this case is 4. So now I have my step size. The last piece I'm going to need is my slope value. So lastly, my slope I can calculate by using the right-hand side of the differential equation because that dy dx is telling us the derivative of y with respect to x is the instantaneous slope of our solution curve. So now I have all my information gathered, and that derivative was 2x minus y. But now that I have all that information gathered, how do I go about using Euler's method? Euler's method basically says you have some starting point. We know that we are starting at 0, 1. Whatever this solution curve looks like, we know it passes through this point. Now the only other piece of information we know is what the slope is at that point, because the slope is equal to 2x minus y. So when x equals 0 and y equals 1, our slope is 0 minus 1 or negative 1. So if my solution goes to that point, it's traveling in this direction. So I draw a little mini slope line. And the idea of Euler's is I now want to follow that path for some distance to find my new point. So I'm starting at some x0, y0. I'm calculating the slope at that point. And I'm trying to find my next point, x1, y1. So if we know that x0 is equal to 0, how do we find x1? Well, to find x1, we just take our old x value and we add our step size to it. And that should give us our new x value. So in this case, I started at x sub 0 equals 0, and I added a step size of 1 half, and now my new point should have an x coordinate of 1 half. What about that y component? Well, to find my new y value, I'll take my old y value, and I'll add some sort of change in y. Well, how do I get that value? That change of y, I can calculate by just taking the step size times the slope. If you think of our slope as the rise over the run, the change in y over the change of x, and this step size h is really just my change in x. If I take that product, I'm really going to get my change in y. Now, what is the slope at that point? Well, that's just going to be the right-hand side of our differential equation, evaluated at that initial point. So to get values here, my original y value was 1, my step size is 1 half, and my slope at the original point was negative 1. And so when I simplify this, I get a value of 1 half. So I started at a y value of 1, I followed the slope of negative 1 for half a, a step size of 1 half, and I have my new point. My new point now is 1 half, 1 half. And then I would just repeat this process. I would calculate the slope at this point, I would follow that slope for some sort of step, and I'd find my next point. And I would keep doing that until I got to some point that was 2 comma something. That something is the y value when x equals 2. That would be my approximate solution. So now I kind of sketch out this process, how would I actually code this up? So let's open up Mathematica and see what we can do. So we'll start by just defining all of our initial conditions here. I know that x0 is equal to 0. I know that y0 is equal to 1. I am told my x final value is equal to 2. 
I'm told my n value is equal to 4, and I can calculate my step size. So I would calculate my step size to be my x final minus my x initial, all divided by n. So I've calculated all of those pieces. And if I want, I can run that cell and see what that h value is, just to see if it makes sense. I do expect it to be 1 half, so I'm pretty happy. The other piece of information I'll need is the slope on all my points. That's the right-hand side of my differential equation. In Mathematica, I'm just going to enter that in as a function, because I'm going to want to evaluate my points um, as a function at my points, so I can find the slope of those points. So I'll put this in as a function, 2x minus y. Now I've defined all of my initial conditions here. And all I'm going to do is say that if I know my first point, x0 and y0, how do I find my next point? Well, we've seen that my next point is just my first point plus my step size. And that my y value, my new y value, should be my old y value plus my step size times the slope at the original point or my function evaluated at that original point. And so if I ran this, sure enough, I get that next point of 1 half, 1 half. And we said that all we wanted to do now was repeat this process, but not starting at my original x0, y0 value, but using this new value of 1 half, 1 half as my new starting point. Well, what I can do here is just add another line where I'm redefining x0 and y0 to be this new x1 and y1 value that I have calculated. And so that's just resetting my initial conditions, basically, to start from this new point instead of my original point. So what does that look like? Well, if I run that here, I've started at my initial point. I've taken my step to 1 half, 1 half. But if I just put my cursor in that cell again and rerun it, I found my next point. x equals 1 and y equals 3 fourths. And I do that again. I keep going to x equals 3 halves. And one more time, now I am at x equals 2 and I have that associated y value. Um, so in this way, I've kind of run this thing for the full four steps. Now, of course, if I wanted this for 40 steps, this isn't a very good way to do this. So I have to just click in this cell and reevaluate this thing that many times. So instead, what I'd rather do is build a table of all these points. So what I can do is just hide these outputs and say basically build a table of these points. And that table, I want to have n points in it. And I'll have to reevaluate my initialization cell, and then I can run my table. And now I have all four points. Now the first thing I notice about this list here is that that last point, 2 comma 35 sixteenths, I don't have a very good sense of what that actual value is. I might want to see that maybe in decimal form. And actually my computation at large values n can actually be quite a bit faster if I allow numerical approximation instead of forcing it to give me these exact fractions. So one way I can do that is just by putting a decimal in one of my initial conditions. Now I can see those decimal outputs. Now you'll also notice that if I just rerun this table again, I have different values. And now I'm starting actually that last value of 2 and working from there. Now really, every time I, I run this cell, I want it to go back and start at my initial conditions. So now all I'm going to do is just take this cell, these two cells here, and I'm just going to merge those two. That way, every time I rerun this block, it will reset the initial conditions and then go through the Euler's process. And so now, I'll get those values. Now, once again, I've taken four steps to go from 0 to 2, and I have some sort of approximate value for my solution. y of 2 is approximately 2.1875, but that is just an approximation. And one way I can improve that approximation is using a bigger value of n. And so now, because this is all coded up, it's very easy for me to go from using n equals 4 to 40. And sure enough, there are my 40 different points. Now, I could also certainly use 100, but if I got to that level, it'd be hard to see this big list of points. One way we can look at this data is to store these points in some command list, hide the outputs, and then I can run that. And then maybe I can view this graphically by using the command list plot. I will list plot that list of data 
and now I can plot all those points and I can see a, a approximation for what the solution curve would actually look like from x equals 0 to x equals 2. And once again, now this is all coded up, I could easily change this to 400 and see how that might affect my result. And now I can really visualize the solution curve. All right, and so now if I want to do a different differential equation, all I have to do is change my initial conditions. Initial conditions here, here, set a value of n, maybe change the right-hand side of my differential equation here. I can just go ahead and run this block. So this is a very powerful uh, tool. Um, so we've programmed Euler's method to find approximate solutions to differential equations. All right, and that includes this video. Thank you very much.